discussing, we started discussing about uh, culture, and in the last class we finished by discussing the question, how have history and geography influenced culture in your country? So let's continue to talk about, we were looking at this graph here, the origin, we are talking about the origin of culture, we talked about geography and history. So we're going to talk about technology, social institutions. Then we're going to talk about the elements of culture. So, discuss how you, with your partner, how do you think that these things have changed culture? So discuss with your partner. How have these four different technologies changed culture? You can give just one example for each one. we didn't have air transportation or the internet? Of course not. Maybe not, right? So you could... Do you think that your culture will be changed a little bit? You will learn from Korean culture and change your your behavior? Yes. Do you think that could also affect your buying consumer behavior? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lassia, Larissa, sorry, Larissa. Uh, what about birth control and air conditioning? Birth control is that uh, women can take pill, so they don't get pregnant. So women don't basically women don't have as many children as they used to have. Maybe my grandparents on my father's side had 11 children, right? But then my parents had 5 children. Then my sister maybe has 3 children. So, how does that affect culture? Did people, women have more children or different lives in Russia 30 or 50 or 80 years ago? Yeah, no, but... Um our country, my country, Russia, um, um, haven't so many children. But our world have, has uh, too many people mm -hmm. in, uh, nowadays. Uh, and maybe the country is very good to do. Mm -hmm. 
but how do you think women's lives have changed since birth control? How have women's lives changed? Uh, uh, women, uh, uh, women, family when they want to have children, right? They can make their career first. Do you think women have more spending money nowadays? They have less children? Do they have more money to spend on handbags and cream? Okay. So this is actually relevant for culture, right? Especially in Ireland, Irish women have children very late. They get married very late or have children very late, one of the latest in the world. So they have a group in Ireland called Super Singles. So the women are still single even though they're 28 or 29. And the marketing company is very interested in these women because they're earning a lot of money and they're single, so they have a lot of money to spend. Okay. <coughs> So if I want to sell handbags, or if I want to sell, uh, you know, face cream or specific products for that age group of women, then <coughs> the culture is important, right? And air conditioning, uh, we can see that uh, because of air conditioning, people can live in the warmer countries. And change the culture. So, next we can talk about is social institutions, how do they affect um, culture. So, we have family, religion, school, and the media. So, if you think about religion, even we have some superstition from religion sometimes. In Europe, the number 13 is an unlucky number because it adds up to the Jesus and Judas, the disciples and Jesus and Judas. Then if you take away Judas, it's 12. So people like 12, right? Number 12. So <coughs> we spoke about Korea similar to the history or China. If you have the Confucianism, Confucianism religion, sometimes the people are in the Confucianism religion should respect the authority more, right? Or the higher level person more than the other religions. So if we're going to sell something in some country, we should look into the religion. How has what is the main religion of people? Okay? And how does that affect the society? Korea what's this main religion in Korea? Not clear, right? We have a, a very clear divide between the Muslim and the Christian world in in uh, the world, if we look at the world map. Here is uh, 40 maps that explain the world. It's on uh, the Washington Post. Washington is an important city because it's where the US government is. So Washington is the political center of the US, and the US is one of the most powerful country in the world, right? So this paper often has some interesting articles. So. Here we can see some things about culture, where people are the most and least welcoming to foreigners. World's writing systems. Which countries have a similar writing system? Here we have the major religions. So we can see that Christians, 
This is all Christians, right? Uh, most of the world, Christian religion. And then the next biggest one is the Muslim religion. Right? This hatch here. Muslim religion came from the 7th century, it started in the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire got, became very big, so Turkey is here, so Turkey made a big empire, right? Then this empire was mainly uh, Muslim. Then we can see Korea is no clear majority, right? We have some Buddhist, Buddhist here. China is, says, unaffiliated, no uh, religion. Is that correct? People in China don't have much religion, usually. So, uh, <coughs> the darker red is the more Christian, right? So Russia is lighter red, slightly Christian. In the USSR, there was no religion allowed, right? Under the communist regime. Religion yes. wasn't encouraged. Yes, it was forbidden. Yes, forbidden, right? So nowadays we can see Eastern Europe and so on is a little bit less number of Christian than Western Europe. Here we can see there's conflict at the moment where sometimes where there's oil and also where in Nigeria here is uh, no clear majority, right? We have some problems in Nigeria. Nigeria you can see in the news. There's some Muslim group uh, which has joined up with some group in the Middle East called ISIS. Uh, <coughs> we should understand about the religion. And for example, if we're in selling to the is Muslim countries in the Middle East or in North Africa, it's going, they have a very different culture than the Christian countries. Okay? So for example, in some of the countries, the women have to wear some burqa on their head, right? Some other countries like Indonesia and Malaysia, they don't have to. They have some strict, stricter, the strictest Muslim countries is Saudi Arabia and Iran, very strict uh, Muslim countries. Right? So for example in Saudi Arabia women don't drive. So you're not going to be doing well if you're selling cars to women gaming women customers, right? So we have to just understand these things. Then we have a school. So obviously countries are more economically developed if they have higher education. So we have a country's literacy rate, how, how, what percentage of people can read, and uh, economic development. Mm. We have, uh, in Korea, it's, uh, does second in the world on the PISA exam, do you know the PISA exam? PISA is uh, an international organization which checks the educational system in different countries. It's an OECD. OECD is the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. So they are in many, there are about 26 OECD countries, mainly the more developed countries. And this is PISA, it's Program for International Student Assessment. So they go around to different countries and they test them. And they say, how are they performing in the school? So uh, you can see, if you click on a country, how they're doing. So basically, South Korea is second, second in the list. They do exams. And they give the same exam to secondary age students all over the world. So here is Korea. Okay. So Korea has a strong performance in uh, education. 
in that the students perform well on the exams, Finland is the top in the world and Korea is number two. So, for example, in Korea, the 15 year olds reading is 536 points. The average is 496. In Korea, mathematics is 554. The average is 494. Right? For literacy, 538 points against 501. So we can see that Korea is above the average of the OECD countries. Mm, some people will say that Korean educational system focuses too much on results and scores and not enough on problem solving ability right? or creativity. But anyway, Korea performs about second in the world on, on these kind of tests. So it's quite strong, right? And then Korea also has Korea also has a very high percentage of people who go to university. Maybe the highest percentage in the world of people with university degrees. And also with undergraduate, they also have a high percentage of master's degree students, right? So if we are marketing or selling something in Korea, we want to sell something in Korea. How does this affect us that we know that Korea has Korean people are well educated? How does that affect our ideas for selling things in Korea? Can we sell high technology products in Korea? Can we sell complicated things on the internet? Yes, right? So we are selling some complicated IT product. You can sell this in Korea. Korean people can understand what the product and use the product, right? So if we are doing marketing in Korea, we can see that you know our marketing needs to be uh, not patronizing, right? So again, we can do mar marketing on the internet or other areas like this because people can use all of those things and people can read very quickly in Korea so we can put some written information so then we have uh, the media uh, so the media has replaced the family time so we have the we used to have people for example sitting together for dinner but especially in Ireland the family might eat their meal in a different room or a different time while watching the TV. So in fact the media has had to replace the family time. Uh, people's attention spans are not as long as they used to be. Do you understand attention span? It used to be that people could pay attention for longer. So now you're paying attention in the class, right? But these days, because people are used to watching a lot of TV and the internet, they're not as good at paying attention. They want to very quickly to change to something else, or change to something else, right? So if we're doing marketing, we have to make sure that we catch people's attention. <coughs> Government. So through its laws and propaganda, and have some propaganda, uh, I'm from Ireland, which is a very small country, so we never try to say that we are the best country in the world. But I well, lived both in the USA and China. I was a little bit surprised in both countries with the government propaganda saying that in China there are some ads on the TV showing all the beautiful places in China. China is the best country and so on, right? But the same in the US. U.S. have some advertisements like the U.S. is the best country in the world, blah, 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 right? <coughs> so, anyway, we can have some propaganda. Then the government can also affect the culture through the laws. Have you ever been to Singapore? No. No? In Singapore, they're very strict. For example, if you put chewing gum on the street, you can get the fine, right? Or even go to jail if you don't pay the fine. Singapore has a dictatorship. It's not a democracy. 
but it's one of the richest, it has the highest GDP in the world. Uh, Singapore has a high, very high percentage of home ownership because the government has a home ownership program. So one of the reasons why Singapore is wealthy is people have their own home. Okay? And <clears throat> because of the government's strict enforcement of laws, Singaporean people are very well behaved. Okay? They don't break the law very much. A little bit like Korean people. Don't break the law much, right? Very low crime rate and so on. So the government can influence the thinking and behavior of the, of the citizens. And then the corporations, they try to influence society, especially if they have a new innovation. They want to change the culture. So if you think about Apple, Apple is like a change agent. It, wants, it has a new technology like a laptop. So it wants people to use their uh, notebook, right? So they don't watch TV anymore. They watch their notebook in bed or something like that, right? Or they use the new glasses, right? Or watch, now they're doing a watch. They want people to start using a watch. So corporations can also influence the culture. You have to understand that these days some corporations they're bigger than countries, right? So a small country would be probably have less money than Apple. So then we have elements. So this is the origins. So this is where the culture comes from. Then we have elements. What makes up culture? We have values, rituals, symbols, beliefs, and thought processes. So we'll talk about these one by one. So the first one is values. So we already mentioned we are going to go to his website in a minute. So you can turn on the computer and open the internet if you haven't already done so. Okay. So <coughs> Gert Hofse has three indexes: individualism. Main three are individualism, collectivism. This reflects the preference of behavior that promotes one's self-interest. I come from an individualist culture. In Korea, this is my biggest problem. Okay? Korea has a collectivist culture. For example, with my, even just casually, I went on a weekend trip with my wife's friends. They all want to eat noodles. But I don't want to eat noodles, I want to eat a sandwich. In my culture, that's okay, right? No problem. I eat my sandwich, I'm happy. They eat their noodles, they're happy. But her friends were not happy because I didn't eat noodles together. They were, I, I thought, oh, that's okay, they'll just be a little bit unhappy, no problem. But they were really unhappy. And I think maybe they don't want to meet us again, because I didn't eat noodles with them together. It was a little bit like an insult, okay? I let them eat at the table with the noodles, and I bought a sandwich, and had a sandwich by myself. Okay? Just I didn't, want, I didn't feel like eating noodles, so I didn't see the reason to do that. But now I understand in Korean culture, even if I prefer to have a sandwich, I should probably eat noodles because the Korean people feel more better or feel happier that we do it together. Okay? So I'm trying to adapt to the Korean collectivism culture from my individualism culture. In the workplace, I've seen many examples in Korea. <clears throat> there is some advantage and disadvantage, right? In the workplace, some people, the company can treat them more like family, right? So there is advantage and disadvantage of being treated like family in the workplace, okay? Uh, so Western people tend to think individually in the workplace. They think, what's the best for me? Not what's the best for the company, okay? Is this situation good for me? Yes, I'll, I'll do this. This situation is not good for me? No, I'm going to leave the company and join another company. So we can see people who change their jobs quickly, more quickly in the Western countries than, for example, in Japan you have the typical salary man who works for the same company and is almost treated like family in the company. Okay. But in the Western culture, if you work in the Western company, don't expect them to treat you like family, right? It's a nice feeling that you get treated like family. For example, they can invite you, the boss could invite you to the house or 
to his party and tell you some very personal story about his life, right? But in the Western culture, they don't do that. Okay? They're not going to invite you, maybe they will, to their house for a barbecue together, all the employees with the boss, right? Or they won't, they certainly don't talk about their personal life and work, okay, that much. In Korea, it seems people talk a lot about their personal life. Their workmates are good friends, right? They're like one group together. But in Ireland, they're just my co-worker. I'm an individual thinking about myself, right? So, as I say, we can't say that Irish culture is better than Japanese culture. We can't say that, right? Even if we look at how the economy is performing, Japan was a very strong economy, producing a lot of things. So there's some countries with collectivism culture who have strong and weak economies. Some countries with individualism culture who have strong and weak economies. So we can't say one is better than the other. Just we have to understand that kind of thing. The next one is the power distance. Another big difference between uh, Korea and Japan and the Western countries. Uh, maybe Russia is in somewhere in the middle. I think I mentioned this before. This measures the tolerance of social inequality. So if I want to talk to somebody on Mexi in Mexico, the boss, I have to call the secretary. Then the secretary has to talk to somebody else. Then they have to make an appointment with the boss. I go to the meeting with the boss, the boss has an assistant. Right? Maybe I can't talk directly to the boss immediately. I have to sit down and wait for 20 or 30 minutes in his office. Then I can go into his office. Okay? Then if I'm lucky, he'll talk to me directly. That's a high power distance culture in Mexico. But a low power distance culture in Denmark, right, or in Norway or Sweden, people dress more casually. They are on first name basis. Okay, so you can talk to the people in the company, address them by their first name. The boss, the top boss, will talk to the new employee very equally. Right? So it's a different type of culture. Uh, power distance. So in Korea, I was quite surprised that even you call your boss by sajang name or something like that. What? I saw on the soap opera, you call the exact title, not the name, for the different bosses, right? In Ireland, even though you talk to the president of the company, they will tell you, please call me Paul or please call me John, right? First of all, you should wait. wait. Best thing to do is, that if you're not sure, call them like Mr. Mr. Smith. But then they will say to you, don't call me Mr. Smith, call me Paul. Then you can call them by the first name, first name basis. Okay? So we have this kind of power distance difference in cultures. <coughs> Uncertainty avoidance index. So uh, do people like to take risk or not? So in <coughs> Ireland people like taking risk. So they have high tolerance for uncertainty. But in other cultures, in Germany, people don't like taking risks. So this is this was the reason, main reason, one of the main reasons why the U.S. and German companies, Chrysler Benz, had a problem. Okay. German and American culture was very different, especially on this area. Okay? Uh, if you think about the U.S. history with the Wild West, do you not do you like Western movies? So the first settlers who went to the U.S., they took a lot of risk. They left their home in England or Germany and they went to the U.S., okay? Then when they got to the U.S., there were a lot of Indians. So they had, they had to move across the U.S., always taking risk. So we can imagine that U.S. culture is a high-risk-taking culture. Okay. So <coughs> we can see in the recent financial crisis, the U.S. and Ireland before the crisis going up more, right? Then the crisis going down a lot more. A country like Germany wasn't affected as much by the financial crisis. Why? Their banks and companies didn't take as much risk as the US companies or the Irish companies. So here are some listings of the difference. So we can see here South Korea. Individualism score 18, one of the lowest right, in the world. Pakistan, 49. If we look here in New Zealand, similar to Ireland, 79. So 18 means Korea has very low individualism. 
people think in group or collective way. Australia, 90. Really a big difference between Australia and Korea on individualism and group. Right, United States, 91. So the UK, uh, not here. Oh, sorry, Great Britain, 89. Okay. So you can see that for me, this is one of the biggest problems in Korea. Great Britain, 89. South Korea, 18. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> even when I play soccer, I have to explain to the soccer team that I'm a foreigner. So I don't do all the things together. Because at the, sometimes I don't play in the last game, right? Because we play different times, different games. So if I'm not playing in the last game, I just leave, leave, right? Because it's the last game, so I leave. But all of the Korean guys, they want to wait until the end of the game, even though they're not doing anything, just to be polite. So everybody leaves together at the same time. So they think I'm quite rude because I leave early. So. <laughs> I just tell them, I'm a foreigner, I have different culture, so I'm, I'm not waiting until the end of the game so we can all leave together. Okay, so this is a big, maybe a big issue also for Korean people when they go abroad. They find that maybe you think foreigners are quite cold or don't care about other people, right? Uh, we have power distance. Korea is 66, Great Britain 35, so again a big difference there. This means, higher score means there is more distance between the lower and higher people. Okay, and uncertainty avoidance score in Korea is 85, Koreans like to avoid uncertainty. Great Britain is 35, British people like to take risks. So we can see here actually between Britain and Korea, According to Gert Hofstede, there is a lot of difference, big difference, right? So for the Danish students, it's a big challenge, right? For you, you have to adapt also to the Korean and learn about the Korean culture. And uh, we can see that Russia is a little bit in the middle, right? Even geographically. So <coughs> this is so. Let's do an internet task. So, just go down to slide 27. So you can find the main cultural differences between Korea and France if you're a Korean student, or if you are a foreign student between Korea and your country. Okay? So between Korea and China, between Korea and either the Czech Republic or Denmark, and between Korea and Russia. So go to the website. And then I'll ask you, what is the main cultural difference between your country and Korea? So I'll just copy it, save from the PPT. Or this is the website address, you can just type in Gert Hofstede into Google. Then this homepage should come up. Go to Google. Gert, and if, if you just write in Gert, his name will come up, right? Gert, with two E's, Gert Hofstede. Then he has his homepage. Here is the second page, right? Countries, Gert Hofstede. Okay. So just write in Gert, then the second one is countries. So you come to here. Select a country. Okay. So. I can select Ireland. If I select Ireland, I'll get Ireland. This is all the scores for Ireland. Okay? Then, comparison country. Compare against Korea. So, comparison country, South Korea. So, here I can see the differences between South Korea and Ireland. Okay? Choose just compare Korea with another country. Your country. <coughs> you can just choose any country to compare with Korea.
You think also Chinese people don't like uncertainty, don't like taking risks. Okay, according to this, Chinese people can take risks, more risk takers than Korean. Okay. Power distance slightly higher in China, individualism about the same. So maybe you guys, what do you think could be difficult for you as a Chinese student in Korea? speaking countries 
generally have a quite similar culture. So we talk also about linguistic distance. How far are you away? Um, we saw the different, with the Washington Post, we had a graph of the different languages in the world. So the different alphabets. Here they're all using the Latin. This is using the Latin alphabet, which came from the Romans, right? Russia is similar to Latin, but a little bit different, right? Then over here, we have Korea as its own little purple spot, right? The most modern alphabet, Hangul. Is anybody else in the world using Hangul? I heard some tribes in the jungle that didn't have any written language started using Hangul because it's the most modern alphabet. Then, in which way is it modern? It was invented in the 13th century. Okay, but what is modern on that? Uh, because he made the writing in a special way that uh, it's easy to write and quick to read. So Koreans are the fastest readers in the world. Okay. Mm. So, mm, just I think, in my opinion, there's too many vowels. Vowel sounds. <laughs> They're too similar, right? 13 vowels, English has six, five or six vowels. So here we have different, again, different alphabets. Uh, the Arabic, we can see that Muslim countries all have similar culture. They also use the Arabic language script. So almost similar to religion map. We can see here the language map using the language. Generally, English is less formal. Countries who use English have lower power distance and are less formal than uh, other languages. It's good news for you, you don't have to be as formal. I have to learn to be more formal in Korean, when I speak Korean. Okay, so then, uh, let's finish there for today. So I'll see you in the next class. Do you have any questions? So, uh, there's just one student who's absent today. Does anybody know who the student is? Who is absent? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I hope she finds it.